When I was little, maybe six or seven, my grandpa and I had this Saturday routine. We drive 30 minutes out to the edge of the town to a little farm stand. It was nothing fancy, just a shack, a sign, and rows of baskets filled with whatever was fresh that week. I always went straight for the peaches. The farmer, Mr. Joe, always let me pick my own from the bin, even if I would take forever choosing which was the biggest. It felt like something straight out of a storybook. One weekend, when we made that same drive, everything was different. The field of sunflowers was gone, and instead there was a sign for a new gas station and fast food drive through The shack had been torn down and the crops replaced with a new parking lot. We sat there stunned. Finally, my grandpa said, well, I guess that's it. They sold the land. I tried to look for something I recognized, maybe a tree or a familiar face, but it was all gone. No more peaches, no more Mr. Joe. As someone that's lived in the city their whole life, I'd never thought I'd be talking about farms. But over the past couple of years, I realized that just because we don't see them every day doesn't mean they don't affect us. Whether it's the food we eat, the air we breathe, or the climate we live in, it all connects back to that farmland that we are slowly losing. Urbanization isn't the enemy, but if it continues to grow without balance, it soon might become one for all of us. A while back, I had the chance to speak with a local Texas farmer, and what he told me was eye-opening. The government have forcibly taken access to a portion of his land to install pipelines for upcoming infrastructure. Even though he eventually got that land two years later, during this time, it was idle, unproductive, meaning no crops, no harvest. Here's another story that stayed with me. I spoke to a farmer whose family has been in the fields for generations. Farming isn't just their livelihood, it's their legacy. She shared with me how she was forced to give up, a family was forced to give up a significant portion of farmland, not once, but twice. Once in 1968 to build highways, and again more recently for the expansion of I-35. Urbanization's impact on agriculture isn't just a story of progress. It's also one of compromise and change. Between 1992 and 2012, we lost 31 million acres of agricultural land. That's almost the size of Florida's worth of acres. Today, I'm here to talk about what we are losing, why it matters, and how those of, those of us far from the field can be a part of the solution. To understand urbanization's impact on agriculture, we must look at the three major ways it's affecting it. Rapid loss of farmland, losing our farmers, and environmental degradation. Starting with the most urgent, losing our farmland. We lose 175 acres of farmland every single hour. Do you know 12.9 million apples can be harvested from that land? As cities expand, the remaining space for agriculture decreases, making it even harder to sustain the increasing population. The second problem is losing our farmers. On average, one U.S. farmer can feed approximately 167 people each year. Thus, the loss of a single farmer can translate to a potential increase in hunger for those many individuals. Farmers are leaving the industry due to economic pressure and policies, and that's really starting to show. According to a USDA report from 2017 to 2022, you, the amount of farm operations in U.S. declined by 7%. My home state of Texas was hit the hardest, losing nearly 18,000 farm operations. The third problem is environmental degradation. According to the Food and Agricultural Organization, about 33% of the world's agricultural soil is already degraded, with urbanization being a key factor. Some studies report that in more rapidly urbanizing regions of the world, the rate of land loss is even more alarming, with an estimated 2 to 3 percent of arable land being lost per decade. The World Bank reports that 80 percent of our wastewater is discharged without adequate treatment, which is contaminating our irrigation water. So now we face a choice. Do we continue the path of urbanization, 
or do we rethink how cities and farms coexist? Because sometimes the solution doesn't rely in stopping growth, but rather in growing differently. That's where two powerful solutions come in. The first one is integrated land use planning. My home state of Texas gains nearly 1,000 new people every single day. That creates a higher demand for housing, space, and utilities. It's high time we understand that expanding doesn't mean taking over farmland. That's where integrated land use planning comes in. Instead of pushing farmland out for development, instead we can build neighborhoods around them. These are called agrihoods, communities centered around active farmland. They include housing, schools, and markets, all supporting and benefiting from the local food system. Some states have already showed this model can work. In Arizona, a new community called Agritopia was just developed, with 500 homes intentionally built around a certified organic farm. In Singapore, despite their limited land, the government is actively trying to implement agri-food innovation hubs to combine urban living with high-tech farming. The second solution is artificial intelligence. With the world's population estimated to be 9.7 billion by 2050, food production has to increase by 70%. That's where AI comes in. Artificial intelligence is helping farmers do something that has never been more important. Farming more with less land, less water, and less resources. By using tools such as soil sensors, weather forecasting models, and drones, AI helps farmers make real-time precise decisions, whether it's watering, treating, or planting their crops. According to a study done by the International Journal for Multidisciplinary Research, AI can help decrease water usage in farms by 30%. With extreme weather becoming more and more common, AI weather forecasting models can predict droughts or sudden frosts beforehand to help farmers change their schedule to protect their harvest. And most importantly, AI makes sure that our soil and water stays healthy. By preventing over-fertilizing or over-watering, AI makes sure our fields stay healthy and our farms productive for years to come. So now the question comes, if AI and integrated land use planning can help our farmers, then why aren't they being more widely used? Well, it's because of outdated zoning laws. Urban planners still want to maximize their land and they see farms more as an obstacle rather than a tool. And on the AI side, farmers, especially in rural areas, simply don't have access to the training, funding, or broadband to run these appliances. The power to change doesn't just sit with lawmakers. It starts right here in our communities. We can speak at city council meetings protect open space, and use our most valuable tool, education, to spread awareness about what farmers are facing. Such programs like FFA are already doing this. FFA, also known as Future Farmers of America, is a nonprofit organization aimed at teaching our youth about agriculture through high school and middle school programs. Let me share a bit about my journey. Over the past couple of years, I've traveled to almost every major stock fair in my state, using the public speaking platform as a tool to raise awareness about challenges farmers are facing and share some potential, potential solutions. This is just the beginning. I'm doing my part, and so can you. The farms may be out of sight for many of us, but they should never be out of mind. Whether it's a meal we eat, a seed that's planted, or a harvest that feeds an entire family, it all connects back to the soil that we are rapidly losing. With every acre paved over, we're not just losing farmland, we're losing farmers too. But it doesn't have to end this way. We don't have to choose between cities and soil. Instead, we can grow together, build smarter, to protect the roots that nourish us all. I may not come from a farming background, but I've realized that you don't have to be a farmer to care deeply about those who are. Instead, you just have to listen, learn, and speak up. Because the change starts not in the fields or city halls, but rather in the hearts that care enough to act. Thank you.